Hi there, it's Rachel here again. I'm in my car this time to make a video. It's just a little bit quieter out here. Lately I've been reading quite a bit about Massimo Intravenia, uh, who was the, um, what we like to call the cult apologist. He's um, a Italian sociologist and he's used quite a bit by the Watchtower as, long, as well as other high control groups like Scientology and, and I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong, but the Shin Jianji group. Um, who actually have quite similar beliefs to the Jehovah's Witnesses, except that instead of having uh, a faithful and discreet slave made out of nine uh, mainly white men, they have a faithful slave made out of one Korean man, one South Korean man. <laughs> so, But some of their teachings are quite similar. Anyway, I'm getting off track. So he defends quite a few groups. And he's called upon as an expert witness to, uh, uh, I don't know if he's paid by these groups. I'm not entirely sure about that, but he probably gets something out of it. <laughs> anyway, so Massimo is, uh, like I said, a, uh, oh, did I? He's Italian. He's Italian and a conser conservative Roman Catholic. And in 1988, he founded a non-profit organization called Center for the Studies of New Religions. And one of the other founding members was a Catholic priest. I believe his name was, I thought it was funny, it was, uh, where is it? Zucchini, <laughs> the Catholic priest Zucchini. Okay, so he founded it, I think, with him. Uh, anyway, uh, it seems this organisation had a very strong Catholic flavour because there are two other people involved, you know, on the board who were bishops, Catholic bishops. So very, very Catholic. And there were was some uh, small representation from other religions there as well. But I bet you there weren't any atheists in that organisation. Just a little inkling. So very strongly Catholic. Uh, and Britain brings out in this article, uh, it's from Wikipedia. So, you know, you have to really check, check things out. But um, so it brings it mentions here, too, that Massimo was a member of the Catholic conservative organization called Alianza Catolica since 1972. And he was the group's vice president until 2016. Apparently, he resigned for professional and health reasons. Anyway, so we, we can see that he's. A conservative Catholic. Um, they got in trouble a little bit at one point for putting out a book which was when the title was translated into English it was called to put an end to the sex and apparently it wasn't anything to do with putting an end to the sex it was putting an end to the governments criticizing the, the sex or cults <laughs> so they got in a bit in trouble with the French authorities over that that book. Um, they have been criticised. Uh, it says here this anthropologist called Richard Singelenberg questioned in 1997 whether I'll just call it Cessna that the the state of the studies of new religions, Cessna is too friendly and does not make enough critical comments about new religious movements and sex. But according to another uh, sociologist, Stephen Kent, 
He said that many scholars, however, see both Cessna and Inform, which must be a similar type of group, in a favourable light, and they share its criticism of the sect monitors in France, Germany and Belgium. So it's got uh, its critics and, and its supporters. Now there was a, a section on uh, the Wikipedia article about criticism of the group. Somebody here, a French essayist, says that Cessna is a scientific screen used to relay intravenous species to the complacent media. So basically just spouting off his own personal views. <coughs> and uh, it's quite interesting here. I'll just read this paragraph. Scholars Stephen Kent and Raphaelia de Marzio have argued that Cessna's representation of the brainwashing controversy is one-sided, polemical and sometimes without scholarly value. Kent further observed, many German and French officials working on issues related to religious sects and human rights do not see Cessna and Intravena yeah, as neutral parties in the ongoing debates. Consequently, other people and organisations have damaged their reputations, rightly or wrongly, among these officials by associating too closely with Cessna. So, so they don't see him as being neutral, perhaps they see that he is biased, and I think coming with the strong Catholic background, um, I think perhaps he is biased. It certainly comes through in the way he writes about those who uh, oppose some of the groups that he's um, defending. Oops, I just lost my place. Uh, yeah, so a, a, a bit of crit crit criticism. Uh, someone else here talks about a case where uh, Massimo was defending a particular person uh, and then so this person A.M. Shinrikyo or something like that must be perhaps a, a name of a, a group or a person uh, probably a group but it says so he was defending them but then their culpability was proven so that actually, um, I'll just read because I'll probably stuff it up. Scholar Ian Reader disputed Intravignier's defence, writing, The case in hand certainly shows that some scholars are capable of saying what those who call on them want them to say, even when the evidence points the other way. I've certainly seen that with Massimo when he's talking about the Jehovah's Witnesses, what he chooses to uh, quote from the watchtower is very selective and extremely misleading if you ask me. Now um, I've got this article from yeah from the Bitter Winter website that's uh, Massimo uh, his um, website uh, Bitter Winter yeah, it's the name of his his magazine. And the article was called Why Cults and Brainwashing Do Not Exist. Which is quite an infuriating. Uh, so in the article, he starts off talking about the word cult and how at one time there was no derogatory meaning to the word cult. And he even says that Jesus and the apostles formed a cult. But then he says around World War II, uh, criminologists started to use the word cult with reference to a, a, a dangerous and criminal group. So cult and criminality became associated. So he says that towards the end of the last century, oh, 20th century, um, the term new religious movements was coined. 
probably by him. <laughs> uh, when he's talking about a dangerous uh, group, he'll call it a criminal religious movement. So, okay. So he talks about um, sociologists and criminologists using the word cult. Uh, but he then he goes on to talk about it's mostly non-academics who use the term cult. These are the so-called anti-cult movements and activists who define cults as groups that, unlike religions, convert and control their members by brainwashing, also called mental manipulation or destruction of personality. So I found this quite an, an, an astonishing thing for him to say that uh, there is no mental manipulation or destruction of personality in the religions. That's pretty much what he's saying. I'll read that sentence again. There are the so-called anti-cult movements and activists who define cults as groups that, unlike religions, convert and control their members by brainwashing, also called mental manipulation or destruction of personality. So that's how he's defining the brainwashing as mental manipulation or destruction of personality. So he says that, this is what he says about uh, the concept of, of brainwashing and mental manipulation. He says it does not exist. He says it's a tool just used arbitrarily uh, to discriminate, discriminate against unpopular religious and spiritual minorities. He said the word cult is just used as an insult. He goes on to say that um, the cult criteria are used, yeah, so-called cult criteria. So I guess that would be like the bite model. Um, he describes that as an intellectual fraud that justifies repression and discrimination. So when people are talking, these so-called anti-cult activists uh, are talking about mental manipulation, you know, coercion, uh, and the things that the bite model describes. He's just saying that this is... Uh, <laughs> It's just being used as a way to hate on these groups, basically. That, that it's not real, that it doesn't exist. I think over the page here, yeah, there's a little bit more. He says... The question is whether cults and brainwashing exist, and the answer is no. They do not exist. That's what he says. What an arrogant... You know, despite all the the evidence, this, he's actually just, he's just negating a whole field of, of research and study, you know, from psychology, who would argue that it absolutely does exist, that coercive control, mental manipulation does absolutely exist. And there's just tons of evidence of it then he goes on to say getting rid of the useless and dangerous concepts of cult and brainwashing so he sees he sees uh, these concepts not as being real but being useless and dangerous and imaginary Imaginary crimes of being a cult or using mental manipulation, he says. I mean, that's just crazy. How can he say that mental manipulation doesn't occur in religions? How can he say that? 
<laughs> people can be manipulated by lies and deceit. Even the Bible warns about that. So the Bible actually disagrees with him. It, it, it tells uh, readers that they can have their minds corrupted and manipulated and seduced. And there's a whole lot of different words to describe it. Um, I just racked my brains last night and made up a list. You know, uh, the scriptures talk about your mind being transformed, the, the new personality. Uh, talks about being seduced by the cunning of well, the serpent and obviously uh, um, the false teachers that it talks about in the Bible. It talks about being deceived. It talks about the angel of light and his the ministers of righteousness. Uh, talks about being corrupted in mind. Warns about the deceivers of the mind. Talks about the minds being blinded by Satan, lying signs and portents. Um, Jesus warned about not his disciples about not being misled, misleading inspired utterances, false teachers, false apostles, false prophets, false testimonies and false stories. <laughs> so the, the Bible has a lot to say about lies and deception. And this is one of the ways, of course, that um, your mind can be manipulated. And I think that is the kind of manipulation that, um, as Jehovah's Witnesses, we experience. He would, tr he would try to call it persuasion. But you can, you can be persuaded to believe, uh, believe things because you've been lied to. And... Um, Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm a bit tired today <laughs> after reading all this stuff. Yeah, so he anyway, he says this doesn't exist. This mental manipulation doesn't exist. And I kind of wondered if he's so, he gets, he's so adamant about this. This is with his group, says now, they have two main beefs. They, they are known as an anti, uh, an anti, um, an anti anti cult activist group that's that one of their primary focuses is is challenging and uh, the the cult, anti cult or anti JW or anti whatever activists and um, he kind of lumps all activists into the same group like I was reading a letter that he wrote to the Japanese Prime Minister and actually, I'd probably best if I read it, if I can find what I've done with it. Um, yeah. So, because in, in Japan uh, at the moment, they're coming down hard on the, the Moonies, the Unification Church. And so Massimo has been defending them. And um, the Jehovah's Witnesses sort of came in, uh, like, when um, it came out in the news that the chap that assassinated the Prime Minister had a beef with the Moonies because he felt that they had basically robbed his mother. Um, and he was like a second generation um, member of of their organization uh, and so then we saw a whole lot of second generation um, ex Jehovah's Witnesses come out and it, you know and talk about how how they were affected by the co coercive kind of um, practices within the Jehovah's Witnesses so so anyway so there's been a, quite a few activists come forward and speak up in Japan as well, that are, you know, former JWs. Anyway, he, in his letter to the Japanese Prime Minister, he kind of lumped all the different activists into one group. He just calls anyone who speaks out against these organisations for, for human rights abuses, he just calls them the 
anti-cult uh does he call an activist um actually what i'll do is i've got a paragraph here from the letter that he wrote so he says Um, a second preliminary comment is that when attacking minority religions, their opponents and the media often rely on apostate ex-members. Apostate is not a derogatory term, but a technical cat category introduced by David Bromley and other, and other leading sociologists to identify the minority of ex-members who turn into militant opposers, opponents of the groups they have left. Apostate is not a synonym, synonym of ex-members. Most ex-members are not apostates, nor are they interested in crusades against their former religious movements. While human suffering should always be respected, and apostate accounts should not be ignored, scholars have repeatedly warned that apostates have an agenda are not representatives of the majority of former members of a religion and their narratives tell us more about their feelings and the ideology they have adopted than about the reality of their former movements. So it gives the impression that it's only a few people that uh, have, are on this crusade against their former group. That's what he calls it, a crusade. Um, and I know when he uh, defended the Jehovah's Witnesses in Norway, he said that it was only a few disgruntled ex-members that were lodging complaints with uh, whichever agency of the government it was that was dealing with it. Um, Whereas if you go onto some of the XJW forums and like Reddit and that, you'll see there's actually tens and tens of thousands of people who have complaints, who are suffering. And I just thought, because the witnesses apparently in Norway said when it was put to them that shunning is harmful, well, they said, well, you know, we haven't had any complaints about it. It's only those handful of disgruntled ex-members, you know, but no one else has complained about it. That's, that's basically what they said. And I thought at the time, well, how would you even know? How would you know? You don't have a complaints department at the branch, do you? And even if you did, would people go there? Because if they complain, they know what's going to happen. You get shunned. So there is no actual way to lodge a complaint um, with the Jehovah's Witnesses. And once you're shunned, of course, you, they don't want to hear from you. I, I tried to write, well, I, d I wrote to the, the Australasian branch here to find out what my status was, whether they had um, actually disfellowshipped me or considered me disassociated because it wasn't entirely clear to me at the time. And they didn't even dignify me with a acknowledgement of receipt of my letter. So how would the organisation know how many people have complaints who are hurting? <sighs> it almost makes me think there should be an independent body where people can take their complaints, because... Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses are not going to feel safe to make a complaint to the Jehovah's Witnesses. Too many of us have seen how that's gone down. You know, you get labelled as an apostate. Even though you have a legitimate um, concern or injustice. Okay, so we, we can see how Massimo refers to ex-members and apostates. And apostate is not a derogatory term. Yeah, it could have fooled me the way he uses the word. 
it's deeply uh, insulting um and he says apostate is not a synonym of ex-members most ex-members are not apostates nor are they interested in crusades against their former religious movements it's i mean it's not surprising that we do get uh movements if you want to call it that like for example we've got the new shunning as a crime uh website and people who have left the Jehovah's Witnesses and other high control groups they are they've been silenced they're hurt damaged people and many of them don't know how to use their voice or they can't they just can't do it so they're going to gravitate towards these groups who will speak for them yet Massimo and uh, Holly folk uh, talk about these groups not really being interested in helping the former members they just have their own campaign of hate uh, their crusade against the organization they were once part of I mean this is just I mean I find it quite weird to be honest so apostates have an agenda yeah, we want human rights to be honoured, thank you very much. We want our families, thank you. You want to call that an agenda? Goodness me. Okay, so here's a little bit on his letter, in his letter to the Japanese Prime Minister, where he's talking about brainwashing. He says, brainwashing is also a category that has been discredited in the academic study of religion since the 20th century by both scholars and courts of law in the United States and several European countries. It is a pseudo-scientific concept used to reinforce the discrimination between good religions, which allegedly do not use brainwashing to convert their new members, and bad cults, which supposedly do. The false notion of brainwashing was also used to justify the criminal practice of deprogramming. So I think a lot of psychologists today and people that study academics and people who study in that field would disagree with him. They probably wouldn't use that term brainwashing. They'd go with the mental manipulation term. And it's funny how, <laughs> it's kind of amusing here, how uh, it's a pseudo-scientific concept to reinforce the discrimination between good religions and bad cults. So, because of course earlier he said mental manipulation is not used in religion when I think it absolutely is. <laughs> Um, how else, how do you get people to believe crazy things if not you've uh, manipulated their minds? Uh, for example, you know, the people that follow uh, AJ Miller in Australia, he's got them convinced that he's Jesus. And all these other groups that, like the Jehovah's Witnesses, they believe that the governing body is the faithful and discreet slave personally selected by Jesus Christ is his channel of communication to all mankind. And then you've got the Mormons who believe Joseph Smith was, Smith was the prophet and the prophets that had come after him, they are the channel to mankind. And then there's the Pope who's the channel to mankind, the vicar of Christ. And all these other people, uh, they can't all be right, can they? So you could put it, you could illustrate it this way, I suppose, like it, uh, you could liken all these uh, religions to like, there's one that says the sky is blue, like in like middle of the day, no clouds and that sort of thing. When you look at the sky, it's blue. And another, another one says, when you look at the sky, it's red. Another, it's yellow, green, whatever. And they each have, thousands of followers 
So how did they come to believe those things, if not for mental manipulation? So, and then of course, and, and that, I would say that that is used. I mean, <sighs> what is the, what is the, the threat of hell, if not coercion, coercive? And I, I mean, I don't believe hell is true. Obviously, perhaps Massimo does. I don't know. But a lot of us don't believe that. Um, so, yeah. The fact is that they, all these things can't all be true, can they? Like if someone, the, the ones that say the sky is this colour, they, they can't all be true at the same time, can they? But yet somehow the followers have been convinced that that is the case. And that's what we get with all these different religions. I mean, the difference between uh, a, well, Stephen Hassan, he, he made a distinction between cults and destructive cults. There are some groups that are relatively harmless. Then there are destructive ones that do things like separate you from your family or have you refuse um, blood transfusion, which can result in your death. Those are probably the, and the shunning, those are the most serious things, you know, loss of family. And so... Those are the ones that are destructive. So anyway, um, I'm not terribly impressed with with him. It, it seems to me he's got his own vendetta, his own crusade against against um, anti cult activists, or um, and he would lump in the the. XJW activists or the anti as he calls it anti JW activists when the activists that I know are just against these policies uh, or these teachings these particular interpretations of the scriptures that are extremely harsh and and damaging to people so it's not the actual people that the activists are against it's this practice and uh yeah, anyway, uh, I don't think there was anything else I wanted to say. I pretty much described what he thinks about the concept of brainwashing or um, mental manipulation. And he thinks it doesn't exist, despite even the Bible saying that it does in religion. Um, and of course the Watchtower has has produced articles itself uh, for example the one in the uh, Awake magazine of June 2013 it had an article about silent treatment and it, it actually said there that the shunning is a form of manipulation and then there were some great articles in the Watchtower about propaganda do not be a victim of propaganda um, winning the battle for your mind will you pay attention to Jehovah's clear warnings which had some uh, information in there about being careful of um, falsehoods and lies to lead you astray that you know <laughs> so when Massimo says that mental manipulation doesn't happen in religions um, well it does obviously Obviously it does, otherwise they'd all be all believing all exactly the same thing. So he obviously doesn't see lies um, being persuaded to believe something because of lies. He doesn't see that as mental manipulation. Must be something like that. Anyway, I'm sorry I've sort of uh, lost my train of thought a little bit. Um, but I think I've basically made the points that I was intending to make. And perhaps I'll put some some links in the in the description if you want to have a look at these things for yourself. Okay, bye bye.